Hey everyone, Erin Bassett here. Today I'm going to show you how to create these tie-dye shirts right from home. Start by downloading the Cousins FCM file onto your USB drive and then insert that into your Scan & Cut. Find the file on your Scan & Cut and then click OK. Next, click on the matte icon and on this screen you can delete the word layer and keep the circle layer. Resize and move your circle if you need to and then hit OK. You're now ready to cut it out, so just put your freezer paper down onto your mat and then load it into the machine. And now you're going to want to adjust your blade down to one and make sure that's correct. And then you'll just load that back into your machine, hit cut, and start. Use your spatula to gently remove your freezer paper from the mat. You really want to be careful and take your time doing it so you don't rip it. So when you're all finished peeling it off your mat, this is what it will look like. Let me show you on the background so you can see it. And then you're going to take that and iron it onto your shirt. You want to make sure it's waxy side down on your shirt. And then take another piece of freezer paper and fold it in half with the waxy side facing out. And you want to stuff that inside your shirt so that the dye won't seep through. Now all the shirts that I'm using for these projects, I'm working with dry and I didn't wet them first. Okay, so now we're ready to dye. Make sure you follow the manufacturer's instructions for whatever dye you're using on how to mix it up. So I'm going to show you a couple different techniques that I used when I was dyeing my t-shirts and play around and find out which technique you like best because you usually have plenty of dye to do multiple shirts. Now you can see right here I'm using a foam brush to brush the dye around my stencil and that's going to give me fairly crisp edges around my design. Now that t-shirt that I'm doing in the smaller little quadrant up on the top, um, I'm just going to use the dye and just pour it right around my stencil and then I'll use my foam brush to kind of even things out. By squeezing the dye around the stencil, it'll allow it to just bleed a little bit more around the design, but it still maintains the overall design. Now you may be wondering what I did with the back side of these shirts, and with that one that's in that larger quadrant, I ended up tie-dyeing the whole thing, the front and the back. I just flipped it right over on my work surface and I went to town, you know, putting all those dyes all around. And for these projects, I only used three colors of dye. I used a reddish pink, a turquoise blue, and a yellow. And of course, when you mix those colors, you get a whole brand new array of other colors. So just have fun playing with it and experimenting. After you're finished coloring your shirt, you want to make sure you follow the manufacturer's instructed amount of time to let the dye do its magic. And then you're going to remove the freezer paper stencil and wash and dry it per the instructions. I like to let my dye soak in overnight. Okay, so the next morning, this is what I woke up to. And this shirt right here, I did not use a stencil for, just so I can show you the difference of what the crispness of lines looks like. Um, and here's one that I did have a stencil for. You can see I'm just gonna peel it off gently. And it, you know, still shows some of the lines. That's the one that I squeezed it on. And then after I washed and dried it, this is how they turned out. You can see here's my tie-dye one that I used the foam brush to carefully put it around and it has pretty crisp lines. And this is the one where I squeezed it. So you can see there's a little bit more bleeding, but it still maintains the design. And here's the one I just grabbed my bottle and squeezed it in a circular-like shape. And uh, you can see there's a lot more bleeding. Okay, now's the time to cut out our heat applied material. And you can see I'm using three different types. You want to make sure you put your material on your mat with the shiny side down and the dull side up because there's this 
clear plastic transfer sheet that you don't want to cut through. Okay, so put that side down facing your mat. And then you'll just load it into your machine. So again, you want to be able to pull up that design from your USB drive. Just go into that save data and then the USB icon and then choose your file and click OK. And then you can see it's right there on the screen. We're going to hit that mat icon again. And then you can use those arrows to select whatever design you need to delete. So just select the one that you don't want and then hit delete. Click OK. And now you have your words and you can resize them. Um, I'm using a size of about, let's see, a hair over five inches by about five and a half inches. And that's for an extra small kids t-shirt. Now you want to make sure you mirror your words so that when they cut out, they'll be cut out on the right side <laughs> and then click OK. And you can just place that where you need to. You can zoom in if you need to double check that you have it mirrored and correct. And then just hit all your OKs until you come to the cut screen and hit cut. And before you hit start, you want to make sure that you hit that wrench icon so that you can adjust your settings. And uh, for each of the different heat applied materials, there's going to be different settings for them. And so just make sure you follow the instructions for those. Now it's really important when you're using materials like this to always do a test cut. You want to make sure that you're cutting through the material, but not that transfer sheet. And once your design is finished cutting out, you can go ahead and trim down your material if you need to, and then start weeding it out. To weed out your design, you just want to gently pull up your material and make sure you're just pulling up the negative part. You want to keep that positive part that you're putting on your shirt. And also make sure that you weed out the centers of your letters too. Really take your time doing this. You want to be careful that you don't tear the material. Okay, so now that you've taken all that time to carefully weed out your design, it is ready to go on your shirt. You just want to make sure you place it exactly where you want it and press it down so it sticks. And then you'll take it over to your iron and I always like to use a pressing cloth over this because I'm using the hottest temperature my iron will go to and I don't want it to stick. So you'll just hold it in place for about 25 or 30 seconds. And you, I like to wiggle mine around just because it makes me feel better about it. But <laughs> I don't think you really have to do that. I also like to turn my t-shirt inside out and iron on the inside of it too. And then I just allow it to cool off completely before trying to remove the clear plastic transfer sheet. Now for that t-shirt where I just kind of squirted it on, didn't use a stencil for it, I had a hard time placing my design because it wasn't exactly the same as I had designed for all the others. So I messed around with it for a while and then decided I'll just cut that word cousins off and then I can place it exactly where I need it to be. So I can, you can see I just smoothed it where I wanted to and now I'm able to offset this a little bit so it fits into the white space. So here's my finished t-shirts. I love how fun the tie-dye is and that everyone can use the colors they want to make it their own. And yet the text on them, while they are made out of different materials, they still have a unified design. Until next time, happy crafting.